Do you struggle to keep your kitchen organized? There's all these cabinets and drawers, but how do you really know what goes where? Today's video is all about getting your kitchen organized and how crazy simple it can be when you actually just follow a basic formula. Hi, I'm professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence. I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have space for the things that truly matter. I love organizing kitchens because it really is one of the most structured spaces in most homes. Of course, it's also the center of household activities for many families. So it's important that you set your kitchen up for success before it gets inundated with all that household clutter. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do in your kitchen is identify the work triangle. The work triangle is the most frequently used space in your kitchen. And there are three points made up of your sink, stove, and refrigerator. And in our example, which is actually my own kitchen, you can see that this is a U-shaped kitchen. So we get a really nice triangle here. So you may map out your kitchen and find that you don't really have a triangle. And that's usually the case if it's a galley kitchen or a very small kitchen. And if you have a very small kitchen, I would recommend first watching the video on how to maximize the space in your kitchen because you may be missing some of the zones that we're gonna talk about today, but that video is gonna show you how to create space for those zones, even if you don't have them in a traditional kitchen. So once you have drawn your triangle, I want you to take note of the space that is the largest work area in that work triangle. So in my kitchen here, it is the one that is to the right of the sink. So there's a little more workspace in this area than there is in this space. So I know that this is going to be where I'm going to be doing a lot of my uh, preparing of meals. So this video is going to be a roadmap as to where to put things in your kitchen cabinets. But I want you to also check out my Pinterest board because that's gonna show you a lot of inside kitchen cabinets and how to organize in those cabinets. But this video is an overview of how to lay out your kitchen. So the first thing I do when I go to a client's home to organize their kitchen is identify the work triangle, and then I use sticky notes to identify the seven most common zones found in your kitchen. Here is a list of the most common areas found in your kitchen. You're gonna need an area for everyday dishes and utensils, cooking, baking, prep work, serving and entertaining, food storage, and cleanup. Now everyone's kitchen is a little bit different. Some people bake a lot. Uh, other people love collecting coffee mugs. <laughs> and uh, there's gonna be a little modification, but I like to start off with that basic blueprint and then personalize it after I've uh, gotten to know the client a little bit better. This formula serves as a framework to organize any kitchen, and then you can do some customization later. So let's take a look at our first zone or area of your kitchen, and that is everyday dishes and utensils. So you're gonna wanna put these to the right of the dishwasher or above the dishwasher. And the reason for that is that when you unload your dishwasher, that is an easy place to reach. So test this out in your own kitchen. Stand in front of the dishwasher. If you don't have a dishwasher, just stand in front of the sink or where you would be putting away your dishes and then pick a space that is easy for you to reach to put away your most commonly used items like your dishes and utensils because we wanna minimize that movement and have it just very efficient to unload your dishwasher or put away dishes and have that space set up. So in our example, this is our dishwasher and our sink is here. So I have put everyday dishes and glasses in this cabinet. And typically I would put everyday like forks, knives and spoons in this drawer right here. However, that drawer is really small. It's only a few inches wide and it doesn't even uh, hold a regular size utensil drawer organizer. So I have opted to put my utensils a little further out of the way, closer to my dining room, which is over here, and then I just carry the basket from the dishwasher over to the drawer, and it takes a few extra steps. So that was a modification I had to make because this little bank of drawers here is super tiny. All right, let's take a look at our second category, which is cooking. So this is going to include all your pots and pans and tools that you use for cooking. 
and I recommend that you put them very close to the stove and in my case I've got all of my cooking tools in this drawer which is to the right of my stove I am right-handed I should mention that so if you're left-handed you may you might want to make some modifications because it's going to be the area that you more comfortably reach for while you're standing here at your stove doing your cooking. Now I have this large cabinet here, which is where I keep my lids to my pots and pans, but I actually keep my pots and pans up here on this um, sort of makeshift pot rack. And the reason for that is this is a gas stove top and half, well, pretty much all of this cabinet is filled with a vent. So it's like a pipe and it, it pretty much renders this cabinet almost unusable, which is why I've opted for a pot rack. And a pot rack is one of the modifications you can do for a small kitchen, which is also in the video I made about maximizing your kitchen space. So you can see, even though this is a pretty good sized kitchen, I've still had to make some modifications. Our next category is prep work. So there are three stages in the cooking process, preparing the meal, cooking the meal, and serving your meal. So your prep area is going to have all the tools you need to prepare your meal, like mixing bowls, measuring cups, measuring spoons. And remember when I talked about our work triangle and I mentioned the largest area, that is where you're gonna put your prep tools because this is gonna be your biggest workspace within the triangle. So that is where you want to keep everything that you would use to prepare a meal. So now I'm gonna be using this space to prepare my meals based on how this kitchen is designed. So in this cabinet, I've got uh, spices, and in this cabinet, I've got mixing bowls and measuring cups. So all of that is convenient in my prep space. Our next kitchen zone is serving and entertaining. And this is where you would have uh, chip and dip platters or uh, trays that you would set out to do hors d'oeuvres or any type of entertaining um, serving dishes that you would put something on after you've cooked your meal and things that you're going to take to the dining room table. So as I mentioned before, my dining room is just out of frame here on the right. And I am lucky enough to have a little bit of storage on the other side of this peninsula where I can store some of my serving pieces. If I did not have that, I would probably put it here and here. Um, this area is good for infrequently used items. So most of my serving pieces I'm using at Thanksgiving. So I could store them above the fridge. I only have to get them out once a year. And this space is pretty convenient to the dining room and I don't want to put any of my serving pieces over here in my frequently used prep area. So I would probably go for this cabinet or above the fridge. All right, our next zone is food storage. So this is your Tupperware containers, your Ziploc bags, aluminum foil, saran wrap, all of those things that you would use to store leftovers or maybe prepare lunches. So you wanna store those items to the right of the refrigerator or near the refrigerator. So this cabinet here, I've got all of our plasticware and in this drawer, I've got like aluminum foil and, and things like that. And in this drawer, I have things that we use to pack our lunches. So you can see it's right next to the fridge, so I can pull things out of the fridge, grab a little container to make our lunches, or I can grab a container for leftovers and stick that right in the fridge. It doesn't need to be in my main working area. It can be over here near the fridge. Okay, our last zone is cleanup. And this is where you're gonna keep sponges and cleaning products, maybe trash bags. And this is going to be underneath the sink. And in most of the kitchens I work in, people kind of get this. This usually is where people would store their cleaning products. Now the reason for that is um, convenience. It's near the sink where you would have your water source and where you would be doing your washing up. But the other reason as well, and I don't know if you experience this under your sink, but 
my under sink area just gets kind of gross. I don't know. There's always like a little tiny water leak or, or some kind of condensation from the pipes. And so it's just not an area where you want to store pots and pans or anything that you're going to eat off of or any type of food item that uh, may get spoiled. Okay, let's do a quick review. There's my little dog, Mimi. Our first area was our everyday dishes and we want to have those just above or near the dishwasher. Okay, our next area was cooking. So we wanna have our pots and pans convenient to the stove and our cooking tools to the right of the stove. And three, we wanna have our baking and we want that close to the oven. Number four, we had our prep area. And if you recall our work triangle, that is going to be our largest work surface within that triangle. And number five, we had serving and entertaining. If it's a less frequently used serving pace, you can put that in out of the way cabinets or you can use space in your dining room. Number six, we had our food storage. This is all of our Tupperware and wraps and bags. And we wanna have that to the right of the fridge or somewhere convenient where we can pack up leftovers and prepare lunches. And lastly, we had our space for cleaning products and that is gonna be underneath the sink. So what challenges are you facing when trying to keep your kitchen organized? Let me know in the comments below so that I can make some future videos and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. And be sure to subscribe to my channel for future videos on downsizing, minimizing, organizing, and decluttering. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.